known as the occlusion effect. Correct? What happens is that I hit the tuning fork, I hear, I put it to the BC. She's hearing it. As she stops hearing, I close it. She again starts hearing. That means as I close her ears, her audibility increases. Why it increases? This is the reason. I hit the tuning fork, let us say. This is our skull. I place it on the mastoid. What happens? The entire skull, eight bones, they start vibrating. As they start vibrating, what happens? The sound naturally enters in, vibrates everything. Our inner ear is inside this petrous part of the temporal bone. You know that, no? Blue color is the temporal bone, right? The petrous part of the temporal bone is here. You have the cochlea here, the middle ear here, and the external ear in green, right? So what happens? As I place the vibrations here, the entire part gets vibrated and a part of the vibrations, they start coming out of the ear. Okay, there's the outflow. So now I am placing the tuning fork here. She was hearing it, raising it, raising it. Then she puts down her finger saying that now I cannot hear it. So what, what do I do? I close this. So as I close this, what happens? The sound which was coming out returns back and goes back to the tympanic membrane. What happens? There is an increase in the sound pressure level at the tympanic membrane. So the audibility which had gone emerges back. Correct? It is because of the fact that I occluded. So that is known as occlusion okay. effect. This is clear now? Now in conductive hearing loss what happens? There is already a occlusion effect which is present because of a deficit in the middle ear or the external ear. So automatically what happens there, the sound of the person which goes into the ears through the bone conduction is at a higher intensity. So that's why what you will see, a person who has conductive hearing loss would be having what? A softer voice. Correct now. Would be hearing better in crowded areas. Because in crowded areas, everybody has to speak on a louder intensity. So the moment you speak on louder intensity, it goes in. He or she has a softer voice because his or her own voice would be sounding what? Right? Louder or softer to him? Louder. louder to him. Okay. So this effect of occlusion effect is the fundamental based upon which tuning fork tests are based upon. Correct now? So here if you see in this picture, so this is a small piece of diagram which has been drawn. Here you can see these are the head ears. A tuning fork is placed on the mastoid. Mastoid is placed. The vibration go in. External ear, middle ear, inner ear. Here also external ear, middle ear, inner ear. What is the difference? It's coming back. Where it's coming back? Sound is coming back or sound is coming out? Out, out. It's, it's going out. Now here, is the sound coming out? No. No, why? Conductive. Because there is a conductive hearing loss. So it's blocked. So it returns back. So what is the amount of crowd in the middle ear? This is the middle ear, right? Which is much more crowded, this part or this part? This part. So SPL1 in this is more or SPL2 here is more? Which one is more? SPL. SPL2 is more. So naturally in conductive hearing loss, there will be a pseudo increase in BC. Or in case I close the tragus, the same increment would be there because of which the sound re-emerges. This theory is known as what? Middle ear outflow theory. And this theory is the basis of all tuning fork tests. Understood? So this is what is the basis of all tuning fork tests, the middle ear outflow theory.